Okay, for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Forrest, and welcome to It's Quest Time. Now, before we get going, if I can ask you guys not to send me any text messages while I'm up here, because listen, when you're up here and you get a text message, it's like hitting a wall, except it's a wall of text, and that can really throw you off. So if you'd hold off any questions or comments or anything like that until the end, any text messages, I'd really appreciate that. And if you need to get a hold of us, we're always available on our Discord, and you can find that address, I believe it, it's right here, and you, know, you just join our Discord, and that's a great way to you know ask us questions or say hello, help us put on events like this. Uh, and also, uh, if I can ask you guys to stay off of the stage area here, this way nobody blocks this display here, and it gives me a little bit of room to move around do the whole hosting thing, right? Also, you're going to notice in your menu wheel that at the very top of that menu wheel is a microphone icon. Now, when that microphone icon is clear, that means we can hear everything that's happening in your environment. And I do mean everything. You'd be surprised what we hear up here. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn that to red. And this means that you're muted. Uh, so that if somebody comes into your space and asks you, are you still on that thing? You feel free to answer them because we're not going to hear that. Likewise, if maybe you have a barking dog in the background, you're not going to face social ruin back at the campfire by becoming known as the avatar that suddenly started barking during its quest time, right? Uh, but before we set out, if I can get an idea of what kind of audience we have today, all right, how many of you are on an Oculus Quest right now, either Quest 1 or a Quest 2? If you are, put your hands up. Let me see. All right. All right. Oh, cool. Excellent. Oh, you know what? I actually forgot to cover this. While you're muted, don't feel like you can't express yourself. You're going to notice in your menu wheel that you have a pink cheek smiley face. And when you click on this, your emoji panel opens up in the air in front of you and it gives you a wide variety of options with which to express yourself. So if, for example, that, you know, maybe I share something really deep and powerful right here and you're like, oh, you know, that's nice. You start to feel it build up. You can just let it out and let it flow just like that. Maybe I got some backup dancers backstage, right? And they come out and we break into it's quest time the musical and you're all very impressed. You can throw up the applause that I live for and I can take a moment to drink it all in because it feels good. If I ask you guys a yes or a no question, you could say yes by smiling like this. You could say no by frowning like that. Maybe I say something funny. You want to show me you're laughing. You can use a silly faced emoji just like that and indicate you think it's funny. And then there's this thing. All right. This is by far the most distracting of all the emotes. A big hand coming out of your head, right? And because it's so distracting, we're going to use this as a signal. Let's say something goes wrong during the presentation, like uh, if, for example, my voice goes choppy, or maybe, you know, my producer has had enough and decides, decides to light the stage on fire. That's actually happened before. It's probably <laughs> going to happen again. It, you know, every few months, you know, probably. they get sick of hearing the repeat, repetitive content, and they set the stage on fire. It happens. And if you happen to notice it happens behind me, you just go ahead and give me this signal like this. Now, if I see one of you going like this, the whole event i'm just gonna you know keep on going because it might just be you you might just need to re-enter the space or uh, but if i see five of you going like that at one time i know there's something i need to address so i'll stop and be like oh what's going on is my voice choppy you know we'll handle it that way you can also press x to close the emoji panel but it's a really good idea to keep it open during events like this because well you know uh if you do it during events like this you're going to see that uh you know uh it, it lets not just me know what's going on it gives me some feedback but it lets the people around you know what's going on right so the person next to you starts going like this that means they found something funny right and they might not agree you might be like whoa that's very distracting I, yeah i'm gonna go stand over here you can totally do that i saw a couple of hands go up is, is my voice getting choppy already is that, did that happen my voice choppy there let's see indicate Got frowny faces. No, it's not. All right, so they say no. So I'm good, clear. All right, cool. You know, producer person, is, is there anything going on with the voice there? No? Okay. Let's Sound see. good to me. All right, cool. All right, so we're maybe just testing it out. Yeah. All right, cool. That's awesome. All right, so uh, let, now I, I just asked you guys if you want a question, and a lot of your hands went up. That's good. How many of you are new to Altspace? You got new, any new Allspace users? Oh, wow, that's cool. All right, well, welcome to Allspace. I think you enjoy it. A lot of cool stuff in here. Uh, how many of you are new to VR? in general like it's this is like still kind of a new experience all right a couple that's cool all right so uh when i started out i started out on oculus go and some of you uh may you know may uh, not have realized this but when uh the oculus go has one controller right so and i grew up in brooklyn new york so i'm used to talk with my hands an awful lot right and in all space all anybody saw me doing was this they only saw that one hand moving right so, and i didn't feel like i was expressing to myself as fully as I could. So I couldn't wait for that second controller to arrive. And when it finally did, I took a look at these controls and I'm like, you know what? These are a lot of buttons. It is. It's a lot to take in. And it can take a few days to about a week or so to really get used to it. Uh, but I like to go over to some of these controls so people can become familiar with them and so you'll feel more comfortable in Allspace and get the most out of Allspace on, the, on your device. All right. But you know, when my Quest 2 arrived, 
you know, I took a look at these controllers and I said, you know what? These are a lot of the same buttons. So we could actually cover, you know, both the Quest 1 and the Quest 2 together. Uh, and the only differences that you need to be aware of is at the end, uh, on the side of the Quest 2, you have an area for your thumb called the thumb rest, all right? And on an original Quest, you have less area. So, like, uh, on an original Quest, if you touch your thumbs to the thumbstick, uh, to the buttons themselves, or to the thumb rest area, you're going to find that your thumbs go down. You can actually just press it on your avatar right now, and you'll see that your thumbs are going down, all right? Uh, also, uh, on the Quest 2, this bottom button on either controller, on the right controller, it's the Oculus Home button, uh, you'll find that that's concave. It's like it got a curved shape to it. And on the original Quest, that was a flat button. But after that, they're pretty much the same, and they, in all space, they work identically, all right? So uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about here is um, the grip button. On the side of your controller, uh, you usually use this with your third finger. It's right here and your right controller and here on your left. Now, because listen, if you're here today, I already know you have a handle on the basics, like the left thumbstick's going to move you around like this, the right thumbstick's going to turn you around like this. So when you combine them, you get these big elaborate circles that make my presentations more dramatic. And if you guys try this right now, when I look out into the audience, it's going to look like you guys are ballroom dancing. All right, so let me see what you got, people. I'm going to these big circles here. Anybody? Oh, you guys aren't doing it? Okay, there we go. All right, you're starting to look fancy. Oh, that's very nice. I always say I wish you guys could see what this looks like. And if you want to, you can. You can uh, if you'll notice, we have Raven Eye floating up in the back. That's actually our YouTube camera. So if in a few weeks, once we get caught up, we're a little behind in the videos now. But once we get caught up, if you look out on, on YouTube, you'll see yourself on YouTube. And you can wave out. If you stand on this rug, you'll be seen uh, on camera. And you can be like, hey, YouTube, how's it going? we got a lot of people in here. we got Edward Williams. we got Darren 3202 right here. we got Lickety Split. Uh, let's see. We've got uh, Andy Marie. And we've also got Cthulhu. So come on in all space. I think you're going to enjoy it. We've got a lot of nice people in here. All right. So now. Now, um, you know, uh, this grip button, you're going to use this to interact with your environment. You're going to use this to grab the bean bags in the campfire, you, the fireworks you got in the home space. You're going to use this to build worlds with your own two hands, right? Just remember, when you're building worlds, right, when you're gripping an object in that world to move it around, when you turn on your right thumbstick, you, like, you go to turn a little bit, you know, like, I've got to move this object, and I'm going to go turn over there. While you're gripping the object, if you go to turn, that object is going to get bigger. Because it's going to change the behavior of your right thumbstick. Uh, if you go to turn to the left, it's going to get smaller. If you move the thumbstick forward or back, it's going to push the object away from you or bring it closer to you, right? Um, but it's, so you know, but mainly you're going to use this to interact with your environment. And my backup dancers could toss me out some of these basketballs here if you've never tried the grip button here, right? And toss a few of these out. You just point at that basketball, squeeze your grip button, and you'll be able to toss those around a little bit. Now, listen, if you're having a room scale experience, you're standing up right now, and you're you're standing in in your space there. Um, what's going to happen is every time you walk out not every time but a lot of the time when you walk out past your main menu that's usually when somebody asks you to open your main menu and you're going to go, what main menu? And I'm going to say that, boom, my triangle down on the side. And you're going to say, I don't see it. Right? This happens a lot in all space. Uh, and you're going to look around. You're going to be like, ah, oh, where did I put this thing? I know it's around here somewhere. And it's always behind you, right? So uh, yeah, a good thing to remember is that on an Oculus Quest and an Oculus Quest 2, your main menu is in your hands at all times. This bottom button here on the left controller, oh, wow, one of the basketballs made it up on stage. Look at that. Check it out. Somebody got a good throw. They made it past the stage blockers. Amazing. All right, let's throw that back out there. All right, cool. Uh, but on the left controller, what you're going to find is the bottom button right down there oh it's actually linked to my hand check that out all right uh on the bottom bottom button there right that's actually going to open your main menu so what you can do is like you know if i'm if i'm having a room scale experience and i walk out past my main menu and somebody says open your main menu all i have to do is press that button i know like i like to flick my hand out when i do it it doesn't make any work work any differently i just think it's cool like i flick my hand out my menu's open there it goes i flick it out again my menu is closed just like that all right now another thing you need to be aware of is on your uh on your right controller uh, that, the raised up button toward the top. That's your teleport button. Now, if everybody joins me along this wall right here along this side, what you're going to find is uh, we can press down on our teleport button. And when we do, you're going to uh, you see the teleport target appear on the floor while you aim at the floor. It's a circle there with a point. And what you can do is aim it across the room by that brick wall by the glass window. And as soon as you let go, boom, you get thrown right across the room just like that. Everybody teleport over to me while there's still time. Now, on your left controller, if you squeeze your left index finger, your left trigger button, this is going to enable you to go faster, right? So what we can do is we can run around the room to test this out, you know, at speed and kind of go into a big circle here. And this way we can make a hurricane, right? We can make a, you know, big whirlpool going on in here, you know, and uh, try to keep it into a circle there. You can do that best by staring at the center of the room while you move. And let's check your formation out and see how you guys are doing. 
All right, that is not circular at all, people. That's all over the place. Well, it's kind of like an infinity symbol. You guys are kind of doing like a figure eight type thing. That's pretty impressive. I like that. That's very nice. Well done, people. All right, another thing to keep in mind is when I started messing around with this stuff, um, actually, one other thing we could try is if we face the stage and we hold down on an accelerator button, that index finger, and we move backwards, right? You can teleport at the four, right? And you'll end up going into the all space moonwalk, which I'm hoping is not a copyright violation because that would be bad, right? You could do that. Another thing you could do that's kind of fun is uh, I, you'll notice I come down into the audience an awful lot, all right? I like doing it. It's fun to do. Uh, and one time I got surrounded by the crowd and I need to get back on stage, you know, for the next part, right? And uh, what I found, I did this on Reflux. I didn't know you could do this before, but I reached my hand over my head and I teleported backwards. You, so you can teleport backwards. It's good to know. It'll get you out of a situation if you need to. Like you got a crowd in front of you and a campfire and you're like, well, I got to back up. And then boom, you back up just like that. All right. We're just cool. Hit the headset on that one, but it worked out. All right. So now um, another thing you got to keep in mind is, uh, let's see, you also have, oh, when I started messing around with this stuff, I used to go to the universe a lot. And in, back then it was held in a very large world. And I walked up to the edge of the world when the event was over to look around. And I got a little bit too close to the edge and I fell. Right now, as I'm falling, right, I look over and there's this cliff on the other side. So I hold out my teleport button. I, I aim at that as I'm falling and boom, I was teleported to safety because it's not like you can hurt yourself in all space. Right. But I tell you, you know, in that moment, I knew I was finally going to handle on the controls and you will, too. It only takes a few days to a week or so, but there's going to come a moment. And you'll remember me saying this. You're always going to feel the plastic in your hands. All right. That doesn't go away. But what will happen is you're going to reach a time where these actually become your hands, where you won't think about anything. Like It just becomes automatic. Like if I tell everybody, hey, look out that window. I don't think about how I'm pointing. I just do it. And the way that I'm doing this is if you squeeze your grip buttons on the side of your controller, you're going to find that your hands go into a point. All right. And you can combine this in a variety of ways. You can use it to give me a Brooklyn hello. You know, do like we do back home. Bear. Give me a good like, how you doing? Just like that. How you doing, guys? How you doing? There you go. All right. Now, what you can do is put these together to form kind of an all, all space logo, like the triangle, and you can hold it up high and show me some all space pride. You'll see people doing this in all space all the time. It's a nice way to say hello, right? You could twist your hands around like this to kind of make kind of a picture frame, right? Just like that. And maybe you squeeze your trigger button to get a little shutter action and be like, snap, snap, just like that. How cool would it be to take screenshots like this? Wouldn't that be neat? Oh, that'd be cool if they put that in. Now, if you squeeze your grip and your trigger buttons, you can give me two thumbs up. Let me know I'm doing a good job up here. Be like, yeah, just like that, Michael Forrest. Maybe I'm not. Give me two thumbs down. Be like, I don't know about about that last thing you were kind of off your time is a little messed up maybe give me a little bit of both because you haven't made up your mind yet just like that you can do both of them i've seen people go up to the stage doing this i don't know what it means but it looks cool and you can do this kind of make a, like a w type deal that works and uh you know listen one of the first quest times we ever had somebody came up to the stage and they started going like this so i did it back and then the whole audience started doing it we had like 60 people in there going like this and i noticed that it was the coolest thing people all over the world going just like this and you know what this is the best way to pick that stuff up like if you see somebody doing something that you like copy them and make that gesture your own and then eventually you'll get to a point where you don't think about it and you'll just move your hands around and you're, you'll notice that my fingers move a lot while i'm up here and i'm talking and you know you don't really think about what buttons you're pressing it becomes automatic after a while okay now another thing you need to be aware of in all space is your vertical height really in all apps on the quest you need to worry about your vertical height when I first came into all space, what happened was I'd go to the campfire and I found that I was much taller than everybody. All right. And that's because I, I kind of stood up a little bit in the load screen and didn't realize that the, the vertical height was a thing. All right. If somebody's willing to change their vertical height for me, like I just saw a uh, boss boomy just went up there and uh, you know, you're willing to go up there. Now show everybody what happens when you press down and your left thumb stack, like it's a button because it is, you'll find that you snap into place. Boom. Just like that. See, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Bastard man did it perfectly. I don't think I could say that, but yeah, you get the idea. All right. So what happens is, um, and when you press down that left, th level, uh, that left thumbstick, you'll change at your level. And you can make small adjustments to your height in this way because the movement's actually attached to your head. And as such, what you can do is if you look down and you push down on your left thumbstick, you're going to find that it makes you a little bit taller. Right. If you look up and press down on the left thumbstick, you're going to find it makes you a little bit shorter. And if you want to be like the same height as everybody else, like the all space official height, then look straight ahead and push down on that left thumbstick and boom, it'll adjust your height. All right. So that's that's really good if you you've changed it around. All right. Now, another button you need to be aware of and don't press this now because if you disappear, I'm going to feel it. I'm going to feel it down deep right here. Um, but this Oculus Home button, it pay, this bottom button on your right controller, it pays to think of this as an eject button. All right, this is your best route out of all space. So if somebody goes into your space and says, hey, dinner's ready, all you do is like, got to go, and you press that flat button, or, or if you're on sort of Quest 2, it's concave, but you press that bottom button on the right controller. And when you press that, you're going to get an option to quit or to resume. All right. Now, if you quit, it'll close the app. 
right? And you go and you have dinner, right? But you can press, if you press this on accident, like you're at the Universe and you're dancing around, you're having a good time, maybe you're at one of those open mic events, you know, and you, you know, you hit that button by accident, what's going to happen is you go, oh, I pressed it by accident. So you just press for Zoom and you'll be right back in all space. Nobody will even know you left, you know? So you, you won't be up on a stage going, you left the event, I'm going to destroy you now with my awesome admin powers. You don't need to worry about that because you're just going to be like, be right there. All right. Uh, but this is also a great button to press when things go wrong. All right. So let's say I'm here, I'm talking to all of you and I look out the window and as I turn my head back, the whole world moves with me. When that happens, it can make you feel kind of dizzy. So it pays to have a quick route out of alt space. So what, if that were to happen, I'd press that bottom button, I'd hit that eject button, right? And then I'd just say quit and I'd restart the app and that's going to take care of most of the problems that you're going to have in here. But occasionally it's not going to work. Like let's say I go out to look out that window again, but this time when I do the edge of the screen, it's all, it's got like a black void around it. And I find I got another void on the right edge, on the top, on the bottom, and everywhere I look, I'm surrounded by the void right and all and everyone in the audience all of a sudden you guys are all frozen like this very dramatically right and i know something's gone horribly wrong so i press that eject button and nothing's happening right so i'm like michael forrest you lied to me i'll have my revenge i probably wouldn't say that because it'd be weird if i called myself on my name like that but uh, what happens is uh your devices become frozen and this doesn't just happen in all space it happens in other apps as well all right so it pays to know how to restart your headset uh now in the beginning when i first got my original quest i would take the headset off to restart it and when I did this, uh, I found that if it wasn't in a charge cycle and it didn't light up, I'd feel like the device was broken because it can take a while to get it going again. Uh, and this is also true of the Quest 2. So it pays to know how to restart your headset while it's still on your head. And the way you do this is you take your index finger and you swipe it up and down on the right side of your headset until you feel that raised up power button. And when you do, as a counterbalance, take your other index finger and put it on the other side. This way your headset's not sliding all over your face, right? And you squeeze it together. And I find it helps to look down like you're in a deep concentration pose, right? And after about four seconds, concentrate so hard that your avatar disappears and you get plunged into the darkness but you don't let go you hang on and after about 10 seconds you start wondering man eh, why did oculus make it take so long after about 15 seconds you start thinking about friends you haven't seen in a while you know you wonder how they're doing 20 seconds go by and you start thinking about the big questions you know you start thinking about life and a little while after that all of a sudden out of the darkness the oculus symbol will emerge like the bat signal and when it starts to pulse you just move your hands away like that and your device will restart as normal right and now, when a device restarts, uh, you're going to find that this is going to clear up most of the problems that you're going to have, right? Uh, now, another thing you're going to keep in mind, though, is occasionally none of this is going to work. A few weeks ago, I would come into all space, and after a couple minutes in here, like I'd get on stage, I'd be like, hey, everybody, for those of you who don't know, my name is Michael Farr. And then all of a sudden, the app would just close. And I'd come back, I'd start it up again, and I'd be like, oh, everybody, sorry, I'm having a problem. I don't know what's going on. Why do we keep leaving? And then I'd be gone again. The app just kept closing on me. So I reinstalled all space. And you know what? That didn't work. All right. And I was stuck. I was like, what am I going to do? I got all these events I host. I got, I got to be there. Right. So there are going to be times when this happens to you. And the only thing you can do is what's called a factory reset. But you have to keep in mind, while this will put everything back the way it was the day you got your device, you have to keep in mind that this comes at a cost. If you have any pictures saved on your device, you're going to lose those. You're going to have to re-download all of your apps, but you won't have to repay for them. So good news there. But you are going to lose a lot of your preference files. You may even lose your Beat Saber scores. OK, so this is serious business, people. You don't want to be losing those Beat Saber scores all right so only do this in kind of an emergency when you absolutely need to but it's good to know that it's there that you can kind of get a do-over which is always nice you know that's a, that's a good thing to have all right now if you're here today you're already familiar with the guardian system you've danced with the robot you played with the blimp you know you had a good time with that all right but did you know you can use the guardian system to your advantage in all space and let me show you how all right but first i like to tell people when they mess around with the guardian system be very careful all right you always want to especially if you're new to vr you're going to want to lead with your hands wherever possible all right stick your hands out in front of you this way that grid will go off a little bit sooner right uh you know and because a lot of times you'll see somebody walking along in all space you know they're having a good day then all of a sudden bam they hit a wall because those real world walls they are a menace and they need to be stopped we're going to rise up against the real world walls and do something about it but in the meantime all right well you can lead with your hands it really does help all right now uh you know earlier when we were going in that big circle did anybody get dizzy if you got dizzy put your hands up did anybody get like dizzy when we we're moving around in that big circle yeah a few of you right because especially if you're new to viewer you can get that dizzy sensation right now one thing you can do that can help you with that dizzy sensation is if you take a good look at your hand like this now that's not your real hand i know you guys know that but if you stare at it like this and you put it in your face like that it can actually make the dizziness start to pass and then when that happens slowly take away the hand when you start to feel a little bit better and take in the world around you 
right? And when you do, you're going to find that this helps a lot. But did you know that you can also use your guardian system for this? And the way you do that is if you walk, if I walk up to my real world wall right now, I'm leading with my hands and all of a sudden that grid appears in the air in front of me, but I can still touch my thumbsticks. And as I touch my thumbsticks, I can move my avatar around while I'm standing still in the real world, right? And what I could do is I can line up that grid with this big display here. And as I line up that grid with the display, I kind of lock onto it and I create like a reality anchor, which is my connection to the real world. And I back up, I take it and uh-oh, I've fallen off the stage. Now let's say you guys are in a nice crowd, right? So why don't you guys come over here and like just mess with me, stick your hands in my head, you know, go around really fast, try to mess me up. And you're going to notice as long as I can see that display in front of me, it's not going to really throw me off. You'll find I'm not messing up my words. I'm not having any problem talking to you. I'm not even remotely distracted because what I'm doing is I'm concentrating on that display. So if I were to get dizzy right now, all I have to do is look at that display and it really helps. You, you don't have to use something big like that too. You can use the edge of the stage for like, you know, to line it up with a real world table or a real world desk. And it just basically gives you a frame of reference to anchor you to the real world. And that can really help you guys if you get that dizziness. All right. Now, another thing you can do is you can transition from a room scale experience to a stationary experience pretty effortlessly in Altspace. All right. So I'm up here and you know, guys, I've hosted over 500 events in Altspace. It's a lot. And I got to tell you, I'm tired, right? So what I can do is I can walk up to the edge of my guardian, right? And stick my hands out as I get there, make sure I got enough room for my head to go through it. And then as soon as I stick my head through, the pass-through camera goes off. But now they also have that, uh, you know, that feature where you can, you know, the, the experimental features, if you look through your settings, you can double tap the side of your device and go tap, tap. And all of a sudden you can see the real world. And I see I got my coffee cup right there. I can take a sip of that. I can throw it down. I'm gonna have to clean that up later. All right, and I notice I've got my, my real world chair right over there. So I go over here, you know, and I go to sit in my chair and I turn around, I sit down into it, and I press that blue button saying that I want to have a stationary experience. And as soon as I do that, the grid pops up, and I find that not only am I still in VR, but I'm also still in Altspace. I never left, all right? And this works in another direction too, right? Like there was this one time I was moderating an event, and I felt like getting up and walking around. So, uh, you know, and I, and I, you know, it's a pretty big deal for me. The event was almost over, so I figured I'd try it. I figured I'd get up and I'd walk into my guardian, right? But there are going to be times when your quest loses your guardian system due to changing light levels. And for one reason or another, your headset can't resolve where it is in your space fast enough. Like maybe you're a little bit too close to a wall or the light level's low and it can't figure out, you know, where am I? So it uh, automatically is going to ask you to draw a new boundary because that's not a big deal, right? But you know what? When there's two minutes left in the event, it's a very big deal. So I start drawing out the boundary, right? And I'm like, you know what? Why is my space so big? And I start thinking of all the days I had to moderate for an admin. Why did it have to be today? And I'm drawing that boundary out. And as soon as I close it, that grid comes up out of the ground. And I find that not only am I still in VR, but I'm still in all space as well. I never left. So you can go back and forth between sitting and standing. If you're at an event and the host is really good and you're like, wow, I'm so excited. I feel like getting up, moving around. You can. Right. Or maybe it's like, well, I didn't know idea this guy was going to talk for so long. Oh, no, I got to sit down. You can do that. All right, so you can go back and forth as you're comfortable. Just always be careful. You don't want to injure yourself or damage your equipment, all right? Now, another thing you can do, and this is not uh, useful at all, this is just cool, uh, is you can go up to the edge of your guardian and make sure you have enough room for your, your head to pass through it. But as soon as you stick your head through it, uh, you're going to find that the real, you know, the pass-through camera goes off, right? Now, when that happens, if you do that super slow, there's a sweet spot where you're going to be able to see both realities at the same time. And this is cool, because this is going to give you a sense of the scale of avatars. Like, did you know that all space avatars are about six feet tall right uh, and they're a lot wider than you would think too and this doesn't really hit home until you see them uh in in, in a familiar environment like your you know your like your uh, office or your living room or wherever it is you vr from you, you'll see avatars in the real world and you'll be like oh wow okay well that, that's a lot taller than i thought they were uh all right now another great a great thing about the quest one and two is it just works all right there aren't really a lot of problems with them uh and but it doesn't mean they can't work better there's a lot of accessories that can really improve the experience um but on for the quest two a lot of these accessories are actually necessities right you know like that elite strap is a lot more comfortable than the strap that it comes with some people say that the, the, the strap it comes with is comfortable but a lot of people find the digs in their ears if you're one of those and you don't have the elite strap or the gaming strap yet what you can do is remember that there are arms on your headset you can kind of swing them up a little bit to take some of the pressure off of your ears if that's happening to you and if you are using the elite strap be very careful not to over tighten it because there is an issue where they are breaking but good news are right, those of you who've been waiting for your elite strap uh they're shipping them again all right. And on top of that, right, they've extended the warranty on these because they have more faith in how they're manufactured now. Like, all right, these ones aren't going to break at all. And to prove that we believe that we're going to extend the warranty out from one year to two years. All right. So that's good news. Now, listen, if you've tried any any accessory at all uh, or you'd like to try the ones that we recommend, you can go to altvr.com 
And at allthevr.com, you'll see in the upper left, there is a link for channels. And when you click on that, you're going to see a list of all these wonderful event channels. And down toward the bottom, not that that means anything, you're going to see Raven Hall events. And when you click on that, you get taken to our event channel. There on the left-hand side of the page, we're going to have recommended products. We also have a join Discord button. If you guys have any questions or you'd like to say hello, that's a great way to get in contact with us. Also, in the upper right, you're going to see the most important button on the Internet. It's true. That's where they keep it. It's a subscribe button. And when you click on this, it lets Allspace know that you enjoy our content. It also makes us feel good. We don't get paid to do this. We're trying to. You might have seen the Patreon sign outside. Uh, but, you know, it, it feels even better when you guys subscribe to our YouTube channel. We love that. And if you are watching out on YouTube, uh, you'll see links in the description below. All right, now, uh, if you guys have tried any Oculus Quest accessories, uh, we'd like to hear about it. If you have any questions or comments, we're going to be taking those now. And uh, well, the way this is going to work is you're going to see a raise hand button appear as if by magic in your lower right. Now, if you want to get on my list uh, and I get to call you out and feel like a radio host, just press that raise hand button. It'll turn blue and we'll be ready to go. And while we're waiting for that to fill up, if you want to follow us on Twitter, you can find us at Raven Hall VR. All right, just like that. All right, cool. I'm not seeing anybody uh, pressing that button there. Okay. Well, you guys haven't tried any Oculus Quest 2 accessories? I've heard those rubber grips on the handles are pretty good. I don't like them myself because I have to change my batteries a lot because I do like 10 events a week in here, so I don't use those myself. All right, let's see. We got, oh, I got three filled up. All right, let's see. We got uh, Boss Boomy. I don't see your full name, but I hope that's close enough. You're on the air. What's up? Where are you? Oh, there you are. Wait, no, uh, wait. Yeah, uh, yes, you, are. you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. What's up? Uh, yeah, there were times where when I went to certain worlds, they said my microphone was like glitching up. Uh, it, uh, is that's a very that common thing. Reset? That's a very common thing in all space. The best thing you can do when somebody tells you that your microphone is kind of like, you know, like glitchy or choppy, right? Choppy, you'll hear that word a lot. The best thing you can do is go into your main menu, go to where it says settings, and up under the general tab, you're going to see there's a button that says re-enter. All right. This will enable you to re-enter the space, and a lot of times this is going to take care of the microphone button, the sound issue. If that keeps happening, restarting all space can help. If you find it happens a lot, do that deep concentration post and restart your headset. That's going to take care of most of it. It uh, For a while, it was happened. It, they've improved. It. It's, they've made a lot of improvements. It could also be the world that you're in. If the world is very heavy and it's made for like mainly PC users and they haven't paid attention to people having a smooth mobile experience, it may make you very choppy because your headset's going through a lot as it processes the difficult environments. All right. But those are a few things that can help a lot. I go through it a lot when I'm performing where halfway through the performance, I would get choppy and I was in the load screen so much. I told them they need to set up a chair for me in there, you know, because I'm in there all the time. I'm trying to, you know, re-enter the space to clear out the voice during the performance. But the past few weeks since I did the last update, I haven't had to do that at all. I'm able to make it through entire events without sounding choppy. You know, really put the work in there. All right, let's see. Who else we have? We have, uh, uh, let's see, Elora Dana. I hope I'm saying that right because I don't always see the full names here. Or Elora Dana. You make it start out with telling me how to say that. Let's see, where are you? There we go. All right, so uh, Laura Daman. There we go. How's it going? So Laura Dannon from oh. Laura Dannon oh, from go. Willow. Oh, okay. Oh, Willow. Oh, good. All right, cool. You know, I mess up the names all the time, you know, so that's just me. <laughs> but you have a question or a comment? Uh, yeah, I modified my headset. Um, I got a Vive. Vive. Oh, nice. Yeah, Frank cool. I made a Franken thing where uh, now yeah. I have my speakers over my ears, which is amazing. And it's, it's so much funny more that you say that. Because we're actually uh, going to be recommending a product soon. Where, Because, look, the aftermarket, because, listen, the Quest 2 is still relatively new. So we're going to be seeing a lot of aftermarket devices. And there is this uh, cool modification that you can do that has the uh, the, uh, the the earphones come down on the side of the device, much like a Vive, you know, in, in like you're saying. And modifying device, it's good for some people if you're comfortable doing that. You just got to be careful that you don't want to do anything that's going to avoid your warranty. Uh, but there's a lot of cool like how-to videos on YouTube telling you how to modify the devices. And if you find that your Quest is uncomfortable, just one word of caution. All right, uh, This is more so true of the Quest 1, but it's also true of the Quest 2. When you first get your headset, if you find it's uncomfortable in any way, please understand, and Oculus does not do enough to advertise this, but there is a breaking in period for your headset. So you're going to find uh, that as the oils from your face soften the insert all right on the headset it's going to become more comfortable and it's actually going to change the balance so if you go to modify your headset too quickly before it's broken in what will happen is in a couple weeks after it's broken in you're going to find it's uncomfortable again 
So don't modify it too early. Wait for a couple of weeks for it to you know, really kind of get used to your face and your face to get used to it. And then start going crazy with the engineering and stuff. All right. That can really help a lot. It can really improve the experience. How do you, uh, let's see, are you still on the microphone there? You're good. You are. Uh, how do you like it so far with the, with the ears on the sides or the headphones on the sides? Do you like it? It's, it's so comfortable. I was getting headaches before and now I could wear it for hours. It's amazing. Yeah. And remember everybody, don't you, don't make your headset too height, too, too height. You believe this too tight. <laughs> there we go. Uh, don't make it too tight because you, you don't you want uh, not to cut off any circulation. You're going for snug, not overly tight, because if you do that, you can get the headaches and all that stuff. And finding the right fit, it's a challenge. But once you have that spot where you don't feel like you have a headset on your face, it really, these just become your eyes, these just become your hands, those just become your ears. It really is a much better experience when you get it, that, that sweet spot. But it could take a few weeks to really work out what's comfortable. You know, how long did it take you to modify it, Alora? Oh, wait, I think I, yeah, all right, got to put you back on microphone, sorry. There we go. It took a while because I had to uh, get a piece off of Etsy that somebody made in their 3D printer. So yes. I found the Vive, I bought that, and I went to Etsy, and I got this little piece, and then they sent it to me. It's a couple pieces. So it took a little bit of time to get the shipping, but once I got mm -hmm. it, it only took 10 minutes to put together. Nice. Well, that's awesome. You know, those 3D printers really have made a, a big difference in make modify, even as far back as the Oculus Go. Those 3D printers, they used to make these uh, clips for the controller that we actually clip it on the side of the headset when you're not using it, and it makes storage a lot easier. All right, it looks like I'm a little bit over on time. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to press this button on this wall here this talent call button and when i do you're going to see a raven hall talent hovercraft fly down the street so direct your attention out this window here it's going to go up over those trees and land down in the backyard area there all right and then we can take it out to the raven hall flight academy where we teach you guys how to fly and we'll take any questions or comments if you have them there all right i'm going to press this button raven hall talent aircraft in route to your position now, this is a Ravenhall Talon hovercraft. You could actually fly the ship at the Ravenhall Academy, Flight Academy, and if you'd like to try it, uh, let's head on out through the back here and meet it as it comes in. And if you've learned anything here today, like, like you're out exploring all space and somebody's down low in the ground, and you're like, what's wrong? And they're like, I'm on a quest and I'm stuck in the ground. You tell them to press down on that left thumbstick. They'll pop up and they'll feel better. You'll feel better because you help somebody, and that's kind of how we help keep this thing going. All right, here it goes. It's going to get kind of low, but don't worry. It hasn't hit anybody yet. There we are. Talon Aircraft is now anyway. boarding outside for transport to the Raven Hall Flight Academy. Please exit the building and step into the blue light. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming. I'll see you at the Academy and see you next time.